Boris, in this video we're going to talk about some obstacles to efficiency. Now, in competitive markets, obstacles to efficiency that bring underproduction or overproduction are the following, and we will discuss that right now. So, the first obstacle we're going to talk about is price and quantity regulations. And price regulations sometimes put a block on price adjustments. So, for example, uh, when when the rent, well, when the landlord has have their rent uh, capped at a certain limit or at a limit that they're permitted to charge, and um, as another as another example, uh, some uh, provinces or countries may have a minimum wage uh, limit that they put on employers. Uh, these price regulations block the price adjustments that balance quantity demanded and quantity su supplied. And when they block these uh, uh, price adjustments, this usually leads to underproduction. Quantity regulations are uh, just a short example of that it would be limiting the production of a farm and that would lead to uh, underproduction. So if the, the government just limits the farm to produce so much corn, then the farm, may, uh, the farm that can produce um, much more corn than their limit uh, is actually having uh, underproduction. So that's price and quantity regulations. Um, what I want you to really focus on is the examples and the definitions. The underproduction, overproduction parts, you don't really have to focus on that that much because I'm not pretty sure that that won't be examinable material. It's just there to, uh, it's just there as extra information for you to uh, take out of this course. Now, taxes and subsidies. Taxes, as you know, they increase the price paid by buyers and they lower the prices received by sellers. And the taxes usually decrease the quantity they produce because, um, well, if we put taxes on something, then usually the buyers will take more of the tax hit. The sellers, they don't take much of the tax hit but then this also causes the buyers to not buy and when there isn't a demand then sellers uh, will not produce that usually leads to underproduction now subsidies on the other hand lowers the prices paid by buyers and increases the prices rate received by sellers and as opposite side effect of taxes subsidies increase the quantity produced and leads to overproduction well buyers will buy it and uh, subsidies which is money given to the sellers uh, these sellers get more money for making more, so that usually leads to overproduction. Externalities are costs or benefits that affect someone other than the seller or buyer. And external cost arises when, uh, for example, an electric utility burns coal and emits CO2 causing acid rain. Now this utility, of course, they don't consider this as a cost when it chooses uh, the quantity of power to produce. and they could just go full bore and keep on producing more and more power and this causes overproduction. Now external benefit arises when an for example when an apartment owner installs a smoke detector and decreases her neighbor's fire risk. Now this apartment owner will probably just install one uh, smoke detector for herself and uh, her neighbor could probably like uh, could probably piggyback on that benefit, but the neighbor's benefit is not considered when de deciding how many detectors to install. Results this results in underproduction because how about uh, everybody else around, everybody else in the apartment? They don't get the the people further furthest from this uh, apartment owner. They don't get the benefit of the smoke detector, and that's what I mean by underproduction. Now, public good. A public good is a good or service consumed simultaneously by everyone, even if they don't pay for it. It benefits everyone and no one is excluded from its benefits. Now, an example of this is national defense. A competitive markets, now competitive markets underproduce national defense because it is in everyone's self-interest to avoid paying for a public good. And this is called the free rider problem. And this usually leads to underproduction. And I'm sure each and every one of us are the same way. Uh, for the for for like roads and stuff, why would we want to pay for the for the road maintenance when uh, other people could pay for us? That's the kind of uh, free rider problem that uh, leads to. Uh, underproduction. Common resources owned by no one but available to be used by everyone. 
it is in everyone's self-interest to ignore the cost of their own use of a common resource that falls on others. This is called the tragedy of commons and it usually leads to overproduction. And a good example of this is uh, fishing in international waters. Some, uh, I'm not putting this all on Asian countries, but some Asian countries usually fish a lot on international waters and this causes a lot of fish to, uh, well, causes a lot, this endangers a lot of species of fish but then they don't really care about their own cost because and they they're thinking that everybody would uh this this cost that they're causing may fall will fall on others not considering their own uh harm to the to the environments and that is what leads to overproduction for our common resource now i'm just going to stop here and continue in the next two videos to finish it off with monopoly and high transactions costs uh, yeah so uh, everything that i talked about in this video and the next video will probably be just definitions and uh, i'll s please rate comment and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time in the next video thanks